We had a lot of drama on the day, which always adds to the excitement. We had to get a car passed through an MOT, and I couldn't see any way that that was going to happen a few weeks ago with the state that the build was in. Okay, so don't, don't do the MOT yet. Try the brake light. On the, the morning that we turned up, I, I met them. When I got there, they were doing last minute checks, last minute fiddles, they were still putting stickers on the car to comply with regulations. The foam at the front of the car was still exposed, not shaped, it didn't look pretty, but it didn't need to be, it just needed to be safe and ready to run. Because they were late doing all these last minute checks and tweaks, the, uh, the race time was lost by about half an hour or so. There was a sort of a lack of understanding of roles and I don't and I think that's because they didn't know what to expect and maybe looking around at other teams seeing how they were set up maybe a little concerned that they weren't set up the same way but that's to be expected as much as we read about green power and about what the kind of race entailed and we've watched videos and things like that nothing really compared to actually experiencing it so just to get there and get our students there and get them racing was just a massive achievement itself. But then the kind of like experience and knowledge that we gained from just being there at race day was like completely invaluable and so inspiring for the students to see other people that have been doing it for years. You know, we're very much at the start of our journey and a lot of the teams that we kind of saw were, were much further on in their journey. And it was nice to, for the students to be able to kind of see all that and talk to other people and, and kind of really live it. I think they the saw the positive by the end of the day and they thought, bring on the next race and that, that's certainly the impression I got from most of them and um, I think because of some of the troubles throughout the day where there was a, a crash with associated breakdown on the, the second race uh, that obviously lost race time so people didn't get to race if, uh, as much as they wanted to. Somebody had had a, a breakdown or a crash on the other side of the track so nobody could really see what was happening so the, the, the race got red flagged but all we heard was the thump. The team looked over and went, oh, that's our car. Luckily, nobody was hurt, um, and the other team's car was absolutely fine, but our car, it kind of snapped the steering column, um, and the wheel was kind of hanging loose, so again, it had to be recovered. Um, and then amazingly, again, the team worked really well, and we were able to get some spares from the green power shop and get the car fixed, and again, back on the track again. As soon as we got that car, back out you could see the excitement on their faces they spent all that time leading up to the event trying to get there getting up at half past two in the morning so they could get to school on time so they could uh, entertain the the over three hour journey to get to the race course you know they, they weren't uh, just gonna let it go and the, the hands in the air when the car was allowed to go back out and and race again and it, it lasted for the rest of the race i think the biggest thing that's actually come out of this project isn't really the technical knowledge of how to build an electric racing car, but it's about the softer STEM skills that are embedded throughout. So working with others and dealing with those situations where something goes wrong and not blaming people and not you know, making them shoulder more responsibility, that's kind of part of the development of what they've kind of learned and, and are learning as we move through. And also like getting the responsibility. So, you know, I think the pit changes were something that showed them how much responsibility each member of the team had and how everybody needs to work together. So if one person in that chain, you know, the person collecting the car or the person that sorts the driver out in terms of helmets and radios or the person helping with the seatbelts, if they don't do their job properly, I think they've realised very quickly that they let their team down. So by the end of the day, uh, they just like, they just made me proud really, just in how much they took that responsibility and made sure they were part of that chain and worked together and didn't let anybody down. It was a you know a steep learning curve, but certainly one that they, they were on. And um, we were quite confident that with some more practice next time round, the, the teamwork would be even better. They could jump another 15 places um, in the, the race uh, ranking without too much effort whatsoever. They've got the foundations of a, um, a good team, um, a good car. Just a little more focus, a little bit more preparation could easily push them 10, 15, maybe even 20 places up the rankings. And if they were to do that, what a confidence boost that would be. But they're just excited. We had a parents evening last night. Um, and as part of that, we were showcasing what we'd done throughout the year. And we had the car out. We had some race footage out on, on the big screens. Uh, and 
the, the students just brought their parents over and were showing them uh, and showing their friends as well. So like, their, you know, other students that, that couldn't come along, uh, they were kind of dragged over and shown the car and were really interested in it. And, the, you know, them talking about their experience and showing the photos and showing off the car and talking about what happened and what which bit they'd done. It was just incredible to see how enthusiastic and how motivated they are and how proud of what they've done, which is, you know, which is a really good accomplishment.